All right, boys, welcome back to another video. Nick Staley here. I made a video after the game last night, and I spoke about the officiating and how I thought it was even, it was fair on both ends. Normally, I don't like to talk about the officiating, but I did go back and look at the game, and I found a bunch of missed calls, including when we were down three points. Jalen Brunson was hit. He was actually intentionally felled. That's why you saw, guys, when he leaned in to try to get that contact, he had already had contact. I mean, clearly, the Pacers were not trying to give up a three-pointer. So I do apologize to Jalen Brunson because I got on him saying that was a bad decision, man, a great game, and it comes down to that. But overall, it was just frustration, and the Knicks need to be better. The fourth quarter was just disappointing. They were outscored 26-16. to 16. The Knicks had a 90% chance at one point in the fourth quarter to win this game, and they ended up letting it go not being able to knock down shots not being able to get stops Andrew Nembar hit up whatever 40 footer dude had made one shot the entire game and it was on a layup and by the way that layup that he made Isaiah Hartenstein was actually being held by Miles Turner there was so many missed calls in this game do you guys remember the play where Miles McBride was called for a blocking foul absolutely laughable inexcusable but even though the officiating I thought was absolutely atrocious to say the least I mean you know, Jalen Brunson was 10 of 26 in this game I mean, you look at some other guys as well, just, you know, they could have played a little bit better, but I love what I saw out of Dante DiVincenzo. He had 35 points, 7 of 11 from three. Josh Hart had 10 points and 18 rebounds. He now leads the entire NBA playoffs in boards. He is six foot four, by the way. Isaiah Hartenstein, 39 minutes at six points, eight rebounds and five assists. Preston Chua gets the start, 22 minutes, five points, six boards. I like to see a little bit more out of Achua, man, because he's going to be as important as really anyone. I call him a bench player. I mean, with OG hurt right now, he's a starter. But you look at the Knicks, right? Dante Hart and Achua, what do they all have? And Hartenstein, too. These guys are supposed to be bench players, but the Knicks are just so banged up, so derailed with injuries that they're starters. Now, obviously, Hart and DiVincenzo, do we call them role players? I feel like that would be a disservice. I don't think they're role players, but we talk about all the time how you need superstars to win but you really don't all you need is you do need one superstar at least i don't know if a team's ever won a championship without one jalen brunson is a superstar man uh, i don't care what any of these analysts say on national television the dude is playing like he's michael jordan lebron james right now at least offensively i get brunson isn't really a two-way player but he's an above average defender and to me he's the best offensive player in basketball right now and the numbers would back that up but brunson yeah certain that three ball was insane but you know obviously he's looking for contact and it was, it was a disaster possession but the bottom line is that Jalen Brunson is not healthy he was dealing with a right foot injury he had to leave last game of course in game two and in this game same thing and he's just out there essentially hobbling and he still is able to contribute and give you 26 you know 26 points on 26 shots like it's not the end of the world like obviously this is we don't want to see that happen again but you know brunson the fact that he's even out there competing man is huge it's absolutely huge you know five tournaments for brunson man he'll be the first to tell you that he needs to play better i'm not going to sit up here and lecture you guys on something that you probably already know but i will say that the bench i mean alec burks played 21 minutes and had 14 points four of six shooting i'm so disappointed we lost this game because dante hart and burks gave us all you could ask for just to fall short in this game is so disappointing dante but DiVincenzo, if anything this is actually a positive for 44 minutes last game with six that, of hey, look, from three pacers as well from the field 28 guys, points he was he asked by a reporter to earlier this game in the if the knicks were going to punt the game with injury g randall said, no we're going to go out there Boyan. and win the game i'm missing someone too uh randall robinson yeah, like there's just so many guys hurt right now, I can't even keep track of it. But the Knicks without four players, they fought. We'll win the next game. I mean, we shot 48% from the field, 52 from three. So disappointing. The reason why we lost this game was some calls didn't go our way, but it was also the rebounding. We were actually out-rebounded on the offensive glass. I don't know if that had happened the entire series, but the Pacers had 13 offensive rebounds, and they were big. They were big as well. I mean, turning the ball over kind of hurt us as well. The Knicks had 13 turnovers. The Knicks don't really turn the ball over very often. They, they don't foul especially too, but in this game, it just, there was a lot of sloppy play, but I mean, there's just, there's really, it's hard to complain about this game because we got so much production outside of Brunson. We, we got plenty enough production in this game to be able to find a way to win. Like you get 35 from Dante, 10 from McBride off the bench, 14 from Burks. The Knicks bench hadn't been scoring at all the first two games at home. And now you get, 
24 off the bench, man. Jericho Sims played four minutes. Uh, we'll see if he, that ends up going up next game. But yeah, OG is dealing with a left hamstring strain. If it had been a foot injury, he would have been out there. But just the hamstring, man. I mean, that, that's a whole different ball game. And clearly, we were we are not the same team without OG. By the way, when OG doesn't play, since he's been traded to the Knicks, we have a losing record. Don't quote me on this, but I believe we're 10 and 14 at the top of my head. And then when he plays, we're like 26 and 5. So the reason for that is the defense. The Knicks, remember the beginning of the season, losing games, we were absolutely mid. That's because the defense was terrible. It was like at the back end of the league. The Knicks with OG, he's a guy that can guard every position, block shots, gets in the passing lanes. He's got good length on him. OG's got at least like a seven foot one, seven foot two wingspan, man, at his size, a six seven. I mean, he's just the perfect ideal defender. And he can also knock down shots. You know, we saw he had. 28 points in 28 minutes literally before he got injured so we know og can get hot in a hurry and he's just huge for us we need to get him out there but pascal siakam i'm so frustrated man i'm honestly disgusted being quite frank with you because of course siakam had a good game without og out there 26 points 9 of 14 shooting seven boards siakam was incredible in this game and then Tyrese halliburton was as well he had 35 points seven assists 14 of 26 shooting but remember, guys, it was a three-point game at one point, and Andrew Nembar hit a 40-foot three, nothing but net. I mean, it was so uncharacteristic that Tyrese Halliburton had his hands on his head, absolutely stunned. I'm looking at Nembar himself with a big smile on his face, and I'm not hating on him. I mean, that's a big-time shot, man. I mean, Andrew Nembar's an NBA player, dude, a starting NBA player on a second-round playoff team. Like, I'm not trying to sound like I'm hating, but we should have won this game. We didn't. Uh, we'll learn from it. We'll be better and yeah there's really no, no other way to put it but the next game is sunday at 3 30 p.m i mean i'm recording this at 2 46 p.m in the afternoon so that essentially means that in 24 hours or less than you know, 25 hours the new york knicks are going to be playing a playoff game that's not a lot of rest the knicks nobody's playing more minutes than them it's not even close like josh hart had played 12 straight quarters and then finally he got some time to rest hart only played in 43 minutes you know, Dante played 44 minutes. I'm looking at Isaiah Hartenstein, who played 39 minutes. And then, of course, Preston Chua played 22 minutes. McBride, 29. Burks, 21. Sims, 4 minutes. So, I'm glad that Tibbs gave Burke some run. That's absolutely huge. Burke should be playing the rest of this series. And I'm not just saying that because he was incredible. It's just Alec Burks is a veteran. He's played for like 19. I think he's played in the NBA for 9 years. He's played for 7 different teams. Burks was traded here for a reason. He wasn't just a throw-in to the boy. Like, Burks can create his shot. We know as well from time and time again this season, he can get hot in a hurry. Now, there has been moments where Alec Burks has been bad this season and sort of was unplayable, but at this point in time, you got to get him out there, man. You, you truly do. Brunson is nowhere near 100%. No OG. Somebody needs to go out there and make a damn play. And Alec Burks did that. I was impressed with him. And I'm looking forward to the next game, man. I, I was up all night just thinking about it and how the game slipped away from us. And go out there and all we had to do was take one of the two games. It doesn't matter if it's game three, if it's game four. The Knicks have to go out there and they've got to win this next game. That way it sets them up in a position where you're up three to one. You've got a huge cushion. But more importantly, you're at home the next game. If the Knicks are able to take care of game four. They go back to the garden in game five. And the Knicks at home in the playoffs, I like my odds, man. I mean, nobody wants to go into MSG and play this team, man. But you could tell that the Pacers filed a grievance. Um, I don't know. It's just pretty sad, bro. Being rude with you guys is pretty sad. But uh, there was a lot of calls that clearly went the Pacers' way in this game just because they filed something and the league responded. But I'm not one to complain about officiating. Was the officiating bad? Was it lopsided? Yes. But you know, the Knicks... I'm not even going to say, like, oh, they lost because the official. Like, nah, the Knicks just, they let this game get away, man. They had a big lead in the fourth quarter, and they've got to be better. But uh, it's hard to win in the playoffs when you're missing four players. I mean, the Knicks are missing Randall right now, Moyan, Mitchell Robinson, and OG Ananobi. Four players. And Randall's an all-NBA player. OG Ananobi is an all-NBA defender. Coming off of a, an amazing game. Mitchell Robinson, of course, is huge to our team, getting boards and blocking shots. And then Boyan is our best scorer off the bench. One of the best bench scorers in the NBA. 
he was averaging 20 a game for the Pistons, and then he comes off our bench. Like, yeah, I mean, these are big time additions. You know, it's not like, you know, no disrespect, you know, Shake Milton's not even a bad player, but it's not like it's Shake Shake Milton. Like, you know, like these are guys that were a part of our rotation. You know, so we need him out there, man. 